Welcome. You're listening to a podcast from St Luke's Uniting Church, Highton. This podcast is of our worship service on Sunday the 22nd of November 2020 and the theme is Christ the King. As we gather in this place, we give thanks for the Wadawurrung people of the Kulin Nations. We acknowledge the commitment their ancestors made across the generations to nurturing this land. Together, may we walk into the future, recognising the sacred footsteps that continue to lead us to the promise of heaven. Greetings, grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister here at St Luke's Uniting Church in Highton. And this service is a bit of an experiment. We're trying some of the new technology which will allow us to stream the services while we're having face-to-face -face services at the same time. And hopefully that won't be too far away. The church's year concludes with the celebration that is the focus for our video this, this, this week the celebration of Christ the King, or Reign of Christ Sunday. This celebration seems most pertinent when we look at the world around us because there are questions about where can you see good leadership? And Christ the King Sunday is all about seeing in Christ the one who offers good leadership. Now, Christ the King Sunday is a recent innovation. Unlike so many other festivals of the church, like, say, Pentecost, which had been marked since the very beginning of the church's story, actually Christ the King Sunday only was promulgated in 1925 by Pope Pius XI. And it was in response to the growing secularism and nationalism of that era, a time when Mussolini had become dictator in Italy, Russia was controlled by the Communist Party, and an Austrian by the name of Adolf Hitler was beginning to make his presence felt. Christ the King Sunday highlights what true leadership looks like by focusing on the one who came not to be served, but to serve. Christ the King Sunday challenges us to consider in whose hands we place our trust. Let's pause now in prayer. Let's pray. And this prayer is written mostly by Bruce Pruer. Most holy God, we join our voices with the millions who this day praise the name of Jesus from every nation on earth and with the great numberless host of heaven whose praise is not confined by time or space. Glory be to you forever through Christ the true ruler and hope of all things. We praise you that through Christ you welcome us, all of us, whoever we are, that unlike so many earthly leaders, you do not play favourites, that you offer your healing love to all. We confess that we come to you bearing baggage from the long journey through life. We bring hopes and fears, everyday victories and everyday defeats, times when we followed in the way of Jesus and other times when we have missed the mark. And we place the lot before you, O God knowing by your spirit you will work your healing way, blessing that which is healthy, true and right, and dealing appropriately with the other stuff. Forgive us and save us. Continue to renew and redirect us. Help us to embrace the good news that you offer us an endless supply of fresh opportunities to start again. Assist us to let go of things and people we are prized or valued, but which have actually led us away from the things that really count in, light, in life. 
Help us to find new delight in things which are truly beautiful in your sight. Restock our meagre resources with the gifts and fruit of your spirit and enable us to fix our eyes again on the humble King whose signs are a cross and an empty tomb. Holy God, to you be the glory through Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We listen now to our first reading, which is a short passage from Ephesians. And it uh, is an affirmation of the place Christ holds in the firmament. Ephesians 1, 20 to 23. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 20 to 23, from the New Revised Standard Version. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head of all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Think for a moment. What is of central importance to you in life? Who is of central importance to you in life? Now, this isn't a trick question. Perhaps share what you're thinking with others you're watching this video with. What's of central importance to you in life? Who is centrally important to you in life? One of the things that uh, I find is a blessing from being a minister is learning about people's interests and passions, the things that they value and give time to. Gardening has been a big thing for people during the days of COVID-19. It really has been a lifesaver for some helping them to um, endure the long days of self-isolation and giving some real joy to them as they've nurtured vegetables and perhaps fed the family and friends, or they've raised flowers which bless the world with colour and beauty. The list of people's interests and passions is almost endless. Crafts of all kinds, collecting, reading, going to the movies, painting, drawing, writing, researching family histories, I'm doing some of that, doing community service, studying, being a good neighbour, supporting family, travelling, the list goes on. It's also interesting to hear who people consider their heroes to be. People's, people who find in someone something that's inspirational or ideas that give them some sense of purpose. To have a passion, an interest, a hero or two, a focus, can be such a healthy and positive thing. But we also all know that it is also not hard to become obsessed with something in an unhealthy way, or to be led astray by someone or some ideology. In fact, when you start to think about it, History is littered with people who have led others into darkness and not into light. Christ the King Sunday is about Christ as the light of the world, as the one who does offer us hope and direction. And I've been thinking a little about this, about what saying Christ is the centre of our lives really means what it means to say that Jesus is Lord. And I've come up with a, a few statements. They're not in any particular order of importance, but I think, I think they're all pertinent. It means discovering in Jesus that God desires to relate to us. It means trusting someone who is genuinely trustworthy, who loves us no matter how much we get the business of loving God, neighbour and self wrong. It means drawing from a well of forgiveness, hope, joy, peace and love that never runs dry. It means knowing that this one who 
while truly worthy of all the titles we can think of, titles like King, Majesty, Lord, all those titles we heard in that passage that Deb read for us from Ephesians before, while he's truly worthy of all that, he knows us better than we know ourselves. He calls us friends and even shares with us in the darkest, most painful parts of our lives, even death. To call Jesus Lord, to name him as king, means to live lives which are full and rich because they are guided by the one who brings us good news. Naming Jesus Lord and King, of course, can get us into trouble, as it did him, because if he is Lord and King, then this shines a light on so many who see themselves as leaders but offer anything but light and life to others. Naming Jesus Lord and King is costly. It involves serving as he served. But in this, discovering that he is what really matters in life. Naming Jesus Lord and King, putting him and his way at the centre of our lives, it's actually about being free. Not free to do what we like, but free to be alive, free to live the way of Jesus. What's the core thing in your life? What place does Jesus have in your life? Our second Bible reading is from the songbook of the Old Testament, the book of Psalms. It's Psalm 100, a psalm which has been used as an expression of joy and praise to the one who is at the heart of things and whose love is indeed steadfast. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God and that he made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Join with me now in a prayer which is a prayer of praise and intercession. It was written by the Reverend R Abbi and can be found on her long and winding road blog. Let's pray. O oh Jesus, you are the King of glory. You are the Lord of lords and King of kings. And we long for the day when the kingdoms of this world will become your kingdom. Lord, we pray for your kingdom to come here now, bringing a kingdom of faith justice, righteousness, hope, love, peace, mercy, and grace for all. Lord, we ask that you rule in our hearts, lead us in this world, and govern over your kingdom. But honestly, Lord, we often have our own plans and agendas, and we want to be rulers of our world. Forgive us for those times. And Lord, we live in a time that would idolize so-called celebrities rather than worship you. Help us to know how to live as your kingdom people in these times. And Lord, there are lots of kings in this world who terrorise, overtax, humiliate, overexploit and abuse those they are to lead. May their reigns come to an end soon. Help us to spread the good news of the different kind of king you are. Lord, thank you for being a different kind of king. Thank you for your goodness and kindness in our lives. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your kingdom that is like, unlike any kingdom in this world. And Lord, we, bringing, we bring to you those whose needs weighed heart upon our hearts, those who mourn, those who are poor and broken, those who are struggling to find hope, those who have no faith, those who are ill, and those who are dying. Loving God, with the choirs of angels, with all the hosts of heaven, with the faithful around the world, we praise you. Amen. And we pray together and say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Here again those hope-filled words of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Go in peace and remember goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen. We hope that through listening to this service, you felt connected to God and to other people. You can join us next Sunday from 7am for Worship Online at St Luke's at stluke'suca.org.au.